Hi, today I want to talk about triggers and specifically how can we manage our triggers, notice that they're happening, and um, kind of categorize what is happening when we're being triggered. And uh, the first concept that I want to introduce is what is in my control and what is not in my control. So my actions, my behaviors, my thoughts, my emotions are within my control. Other people's behaviors, what they say, their actions are not within my control. This is gonna eventually, in another video, I'll be talking more about boundaries, but this, this is the, the, the foundation for boundaries is recognizing what you can control and what you cannot control. So if you wanna set a boundary, you say, if you do this again, this is the consequence, and it has to be a consequence that you can follow through on. So, but this is, this is essentially true you can control yourself and everything else in the world is really not within your control and accepting that is is really key to your own personal development the other thing that is also true this is a it's called an a cultural iceberg and at the top it's talking about the things that you can see that are different different uh, foods different ways of dressing, different dances, different um, things that we celebrate. But underlying, underneath, there's all kinds of categories here. There's um, how, how we are in relationships, like power dynamics, how we are elders versus young people are treated, how women versus men are treated. There's like ideas of God, ideas of religion, ideas how people relate to power, all kinds of things that are underlying assumptions of cultures so if I am so so I want to just think about so there's a person over here that is doing something that you don't like and then there's the reality of what you can, can control and what you can't control and then there's you over here being triggered so sometimes when this is happening there the trigger in you is is common with the underlying assumption that they have so I don't know something like women are supposed to clean the house if you grew up in a household where that was expected and you find you had resentment built up over that idea when you in life, you're, you're at work and there's a male coworker, say, that's trying to, ex is expecting you to clean up after them and you have a resentment. Well, they may be, have come from a household where their mother always cleaned up after them and they had that same idea. Or they may just be a messy person. And, and here's the thing, you don't know necessarily what their underlying assumptions are, but you can, you can assume If, you're, if you are not being triggered, you will have more access to your ability to approach the person with curiosity and ask them, what are they assuming? How do they assume that this, uh, things are gonna get cleaned up? Um, you can also, once you've asked with curiosity, you can also express, oh, well, that's not something I'm willing to do, or that's, you know, I'm only gonna be taking, like putting my dishes in the dishwasher or whatever. But if you're being triggered and you also have an underlying assumption, like you grew up somewhere where you had an underlying assumption that that was your responsibility, but you resented it. So you're being triggered by something that somebody else is doing. So I think the exercise that I would like to people to try is journaling or writing down in a, a situation where you are being triggered, what are the underlying assumptions that you resent that are being triggered within you? What do you think the underlying assumptions of the other person are? And 
is there a possibility that there's another explanation for their behavior? And if you were going to calmly and maturely approach them to talk about the issue, what are some things that you could say that you think would create a boundary where you're saying, I think maybe you're expecting me to do this, but actually that's not something I'm willing to do. You, the boundary would have to be something that you're, you're able to follow through on and there's no leeway for them to come back and say, well, no, you have to do this. It has to be something that you have absolute control over. And this is where we can use meditation, even in a work situation. You can go sit down at your desk for one minute and just notice the feelings that are coming up in you. Notice the sensations in your body, notice the feelings, get out a piece of paper and write down what, what are my assumptions? What is, what is actually triggering me? Because an emotional trigger, the, the precursor to an emotional trigger is a thought. So there is a thought that you are having that is leaving you feeling powerless, resentful, angry, sad, whatever it is. But there's a belief that's underlying that. And the more you can uncover your own cultural uh, iceberg and understand what all these traits, what are all these things you were raised with and how do you actually feel? How, how many of these do you actually wanna go along with and you, you find are useful in your life? And how many of these do you want to uh, let go of? And this is how we can, uh, one way of thinking of cleaning up our own triggers. So I invite you to try either in a three minute meditation or in some journaling, looking at your own cultural iceberg.